I know I'm going to blow some minds with this statement right here, but the Howard Stern of the 80s and 90s isn't the same animal of the Howard Stern of 2023. I know, right? Shocking, shocking. But this one right here just really does drive home the idea that this guy has totally lost touch with his base. Like, who's actually listening to him in the morning? Do you think, do you think those woke white women that you're going to go ahead and try to identify with, ah, oh, I'm, I'm a woke motherfucker and I love it. Boo! You, you, do you really think that those house wives and those those soccer moms that are taking their kids to the school in the morning are gonna just you know oh my god you like i would normally just listen to rachel ray or you know oh to the view or the view that's on there or oh if we're feeling a little spicy we might turn it over we might listen to megan kelly do you think they're gonna just hop in this or uh, hop in there i was gonna say studebaker i couldn't have sounded older with that but just hop in their minivan and then just you know their chrysler Town and country. There we go. I see you'll remember an old minivan or two. And just plop on Sirius 100 or 101 to catch one of the old Howard replays. Do you think that... The, do you, are, is that the group that you're trying for? Like, to say that he's a shock jock in today's day and age must be just referring to his employment status. Wow, I'm still shocked he's fucking employed. People are still listening to this old douchebag? Like, bro, we already knew that he was bitched up as an old school O&A fan. I think it's been a week since I've said that, so I might as well just throw that back in there. But I already knew that he was bitched up by trying to get the boys canceled in the early 2000s and now him just proclaiming that he's woke it's like yeah how we we've known for years at this point in time like you you were always like he's the poster child for being a sellout he secured the bag you know the hundred million dollars and then when he re-upped his deal with sirius xm again like we knew that he just simply secured the bag back in the cut and now he's just been coasting okay it just became super obvious when already overdosed and got off the show you started to integrate your wife into the product more and more and well people have just been dropping off like every once in a while if you have an interesting person to interview come on the show people might tune in i always hear that you're a good interview frankly i've never listened to one i've seen some old material but we're talking old with like billy west gilbert godfried you know all of that shit from back in the cut like that was some funny stuff and then of course some Artie lang in studio bits which you and the group that you're trying to court right now would just go ahead and cancel you for. And if I'm to go ahead and paraphrase something that one of my favorite content creators, short form content creators, had popularized, you all know about get woke, go broke as a phrase, as a moniker, and it seems to stick fairly often, but as Razorfist puts it, it is get broke, go woke, and then croak. So what I'm seeing right here from Howard Stern kind of fits that mold that Razor's laying out. But I've got a little addendum to this, okay? Go morally broke, get morally woke, and then Howie's also 69, and that's probably close to the end of his current contract. He's getting ready to professionally croak. So yeah, why not try to reach out to a new audience where he can just have this toned down persona, but then also realize that that woke crowd, yeah, they don't really fuck around with past actions for much as they want to say that somebody's past doesn't matter they will cancel you for anything so you better make sure that you are squeaky clean if you're trying to court that audience this is a dude who hired whores to sit on Sibians, okay? He was playing putt-putt in the butt-butt with strippers, for Christ's sakes. I'm not saying that, that shit ain't fucking hilarious. It's just something that, you know, his uh, current audience wouldn't look on as fondly. Howard Stern said that uh, takes it, uh, he takes it as a compliment when his critics call him woke, declaring, oh, I am woke. Uh, Robin, Robin, uh, look at me. Look at me. Would you consider me woke? Because I'd consider myself woke. I'm a, I'm a woke motherfucker, and I love it. Boo, boo, boo. Serious XM radio I, I don't 50s on five hosts like is that what we want to call them who rose to stardom with offensive skits that bordered on sexist and ra bordered like the dude did blackface i've got nothing wrong with that okay i'll just go ahead like there's nothing that anybody can overtly do in good like christ almighty he had a fucking clan member he had a i forget what his official ranking was but he had clan members on his like actual racists actual racists whenever anybody says in jest or jokes and christ almighty i cited billy west and he was dropping the n-bomb on terrestrial radio for christ's sakes i got no problem with all of that shit and sexist again how many days in a row could he go with not having a whore a professional whore on the radio doing debaucherous shit without even anybody having, well, outside of the e-show, even having the opportunity to see inside the studio. So he was just having people perform sex acts for an audience of like six. Like, it was funny 
it was it perfectly encapsulated and defined the time of the mid to late 90s but bro as much as you've tried to hide your past the internet doesn't forget like i'm pretty sure there are websites that are out there that have archived every single radio show that ona has ever done at least from the w or the wnew days all the way through you know the Syria uh, from the yeah, xm to the Sirius xm regime like it's all out there for everybody to see and listen to and i do encourage you and i do that on a regular basis just to you know refresh my humor every once in a while but when it comes to howie like this dude's been around for fucking ever bro and i love private parts that shit is funny as fuck that's about my biggest exposure pause to howard stern and the shit that he does on that like simulating or rather blowing into the phone blow or i'm sorry blowing into the microphone while a woman has a one of those big old 90 speakers tipped over in order to get her off like that shit is hilarious it's just not howard maybe that's howard stern this is just you know uncle howie from the old w4 days maybe this is hop along howie like what are we doing? I uh, hear that a lot of, uh, that, I, that I'm, I'm not good anymore because I'm woke, said Stern, a vocal critic and of his erstwhile friend, former yeah, President Donald Trump, who was on his show a lot. Somebody who he calls racist and sexist, he would give a platform to. But see, it doesn't see how little this all makes sense. OK, uh, by the way, I uh, kind, kind of take that as a compliment. I, I am woke, a self-described king of all media, said on Monday the same day, took aim at rep, yeah, Representative Lauren Boebert, which I also talked about, and I actually defended Lauren Boebert until her simp ex-husband came along. He's like, no, bro, it's actually not all that bad, and it's fine, because sometimes she lets me watch. It's like, just shut the fuck up. You're almost as embarrassing as Howard. I'm calling her a uh, disgrace to the country uh, for her behavior at Denver Movie Theater last week. I'll uh, tell you what I feel about it. It's the opposite of woke, is uh, being asleep because we were so good with words said stern a staunch supporter of the democratic party remember he also ran for at least governor of new york on the uh not sorry uh on the uh indep not independent libertarian ticket sorry it's late in my recording day words are words are not making a whole hell of a lot of sense but it makes more sense than what howard stern is talking about on radio and if uh, i'm woke i i can't get behind trump i which is uh what what i think it means uh, i support people who want to be transgender i am for the vaccine i'm very for the vaccine dude uh, call me woke as you fucking want yeah but woke people most times don't want you swearing especially if it's at a specific uh protected group so that could be uh, we might be pushing a boundary right there the notorious germaphobe uh, i guess that's one moniker that you could go under has reportedly gone to extreme lengths to isolate himself since the spread of the coof stern on monday denounces critics of the vaccine saying i'm for i'm not for stupidity you know but then you come out later in the week and say that you're proud to be woke makes sense i ran out uh, friday morning to get inoculated against the coronavirus of course did. i was over at cvs thank you cvs i went there at the nine in the morning i got myself the new vaccine not fucking science this fucking country is so great well that's fantastic then why are you promoting an ideology that would see it completely and totally destroyed i don't get it i'm woke motherfucker i love it boo boo i love being woke I want to be awake. I, I want to le read uh, legitimate news sources. Again, how many of those legitimate news sources also hid legitimate news? Okay, cool. But again, he's happy whenever he gets glowing reviews from anybody because that means somebody's still listening. Stern also alluded to the claims made by Trump that his supporters that President Biden's election victory was fraudulent. Here's how woke I am. Okay, cool. He's, he's going to admit to a felony. I voted for Biden 15 thousand times who i believe the election was not rigged oh my god good old shock jock howie constantly known for pushing the boundaries breaking the mold lines up with the corporate line cool i am woke i think that's a compliment stern has made provocative comments about trump and his backers in recent years yeah yeah we know and then also conflated uh, everybody that I, I everybody that i have a problem with robin uh, they also happen to be trump supporters okay cool including Joe Rogan, who still refuses to have Trump on his podcast. It's fucking weird. May of 2020, uh, Stern says he hates those who voted for the former real estate developer. Yeah, that's a little bit further than just a simple disagreement. I hate all of them. All 74 million of them this the last time around? In May of 2020. So they hadn't officially cast their votes yet. Strange, a lot of Biden supporters had already. Uh, in April, Stern sided with transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Are you... 
I, did I miss this? Or did I talk about this? It's been a long year, folks. After his endorsement deal with Bud Light, it prompted right-leaning celebrities such as Kid Rock, Travis Tritt, both of which I'm pretty sure, at least in the form of Kid Rock, have been on his show multiple times. But it's not like Howie to go ahead and twist the knife in the back of people that he previously worked with. Just ask Jackie the Joke Man. Uh, declare a boycott of an Anheuser-Busch brand. Uh, Stern's newfound wokeness. Newfound? Okay. Comes years after getting laughs with offensive remarks, including fat shaming precious star gabri oh yeah right precious in 2020 or in 2010 sorry oh my god okay i don't know the jokes that uh stern and the cast would have levied at um precious but once again shout out to the funniest man to have ever consistently sat in front of one of these on a daily basis anthony cumia for his jokes about precious oh oh I, I know them. I know them all. I'm not going to say them, but I know them all. And they're great. Think about references because, okay, I, I can go ahead and allude to one of them. I just think of, okay, because Precious, Precious was a movie, right? A very lauded and uh, a critically acclaimed movie. And, uh, well, Anthony Ant made a couple of comparisons to another critically acclaimed and very well, very well appreciated movie over the years uh, from like the 30s or something like that, shot in black and white and, you know, in New York and all that involved it this very famous scene with a, the Empire State Building and oh, Faye Ray was in that one as well. I, I just didn't really know if the timelines could match up as well with what Ant was talking about. But, you know, hey, man, something, something biplane guns. I don't, I, you know, uh, there's the the most enormous fat black chick I've ever seen before. Robin, 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 you're a glowing visage boo, of the, a black beauty, Robin. Uh, he said on a serious show, according to the Daily Telegraph, uh, she's enormous. Everybody's pretending she's a uh, part of show business and uh she's she's never gonna be in another movie i'm sure if that's the worst that he had to say about precious bro my brief pussyfooting around the obvious joke was far more offensive but yeah no he ended up catching some fcc fines i'm sure but that was mostly um mel karmazim who ended up eating all of those anyways uh all right, he said in 1992, the closest I came to making love to a black woman was when I masturbated to a picture of Aunt Jemima on a pancake box. I did it right. Oh, I did it right on her kerchief. That's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Depends on the, you know, the other context of everybody in the studio. But yeah, no, he, he always surrounded himself with some very funny, very talented individuals. How we... Well, also, if I can go ahead and cite Razorfist one more time, he said that, you know, Ozzy Osbourne is kind of like the Howard Stern of the music industry, he surrounds himself with exceptional musicians. But I also think, you know, even listening to some of the old Stern stuff, selective clips and all that shit of, you know, people that, you know, do make me laugh or did make me laugh in the case of Gilbert Godfrey, a banana. -ma. But I don't know if Howard Stern was ever as talented as he would like you to believe in so much as, you know, Ozzy is you know Ozzy's solo career at least up until you know no more tears and then of course his first run with black sabbath and all immaculate shit but anyways anyways if that's the best that the new york post can do don't worry guys don't worry there's something a little bit more spicy oh something that was super spicy that was out there in the cut that was uh, circulating as well around the same time that he was uh, proudly proclaiming that he's woke and well jack Posobiec ended up finding this clip about howard stern after the columbine shooting in 1999, probably in on and around the same time that a lot of these current wave of uh, leftist wokies were uh, just being born or, you know, not even not even alive or at least, you know, sentient enough to form opinions. And that's also implying that they're also sentient at this point in time. But, you know, hey, not even it's not in their current recollection. And these people also think that history begins the moment that they start to matter. So they wouldn't know anything about this. But Poso has us put up right here. But Howard Zern had to say about about the Columbine shooters. And well, we could go ahead and read the description, or we could just listen to this 39 second clip from Howie. Ah, we'll just go ahead and hear it from the horse's ass. Mouth, mouth. It's a bunch of chaos, shooting and. Boy, a bunch of good looking girls go to that school. That guy was right, the guy who called him, he was a little too excited, but there was, like, was like really good looking girls running out of there with their hands over their heads. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you're making fun of the day after, you know, and, uh, one of the biggest tragedies ever that ended up setting a whole bunch of stupid legislation in motion. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. That could be funny. You can go ahead and riff off of anything. And again, this is 1999 Howard at the peak of his powers where everything was shocking all the time. So you're going to get some leeway on that. So far, I'm, I'm not mad at that. You know what? Could be funny. I think the bomb teams are still working. Did those kids try to have sex with any of the good looking girls? They didn't even do that. 
Okay, interesting. Did those kids even try to have sex with any of the good-looking girls at the school? That probably led to a bunch of the frustration and then not having the proper avenues in order to fix that. That and the copious amounts of drugs that they were stuffing in their face every single day. But nobody wants to talk about that part. But no, no, no. Just simply, even, uh, you know, being a time traveler when it comes to discussing this issue, uh, discussing the whole incel problem and the over-sexualization of kids in high school and then the need to procure sex. Oh, of course. Okay, you know, delving into a bit of the culture wars on that one there, Howie. Okay, let's we'll see where you take this. At least if you're going to go kill yourself and kill all the kids, like, why wouldn't you have some sex? Yeah, yeah I would think so. That, I would... Okay, uh, be, be uh, stress relief. And then, of course, you know, Howie always just relying on sexual innuendo and shit like that. So, all right, par for the course. Par for the course. I want some sex, but... Yeah, I mean, if I was going to kill some people, I'd take them out with some sex. Um, I guess they were getting a rush from what they were doing. They seem like they, they, these guys were really against the good-looking girls because the good-looking girls wouldn't pay attention to them. Um, okay, so far so good, but don't worry, guys. This takes a hard left turn, like Howard in 2023. Like the good-looking girls would be begging them to live, and they go, you don't have to beg because you're going to be dead in a minute. Yeah, don't, don't cry. Oh, you're don't gonna cry. I understand what he's trying to do with the joke, okay? I understand that that was probably a joke. It probably got a laugh in the studio afterwards. But to the Wokies that are out there, they're not going to be as charitable as that, okay? Because you're right there. You're basically advocating for EPAR for a bunch of future murder victims. Okay, it's kind of funny. I would find it funny. But you know what? The people that you're trying to court right now aren't going to be as charitable with their interpretation on that one. And especially you're going up against one of the protected classes. You're going up against women on that one, Howie. Holy. And if that's going to be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to running back your old clips for you, yeah, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Hey, man, if you're playing with fire, you're going to get burnt. And, you know, as a proud Jew, I think you know a thing or two about staying out of hot places. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.